Hello fashion sewers, I hope you are well. If you're new to my channel, I'm Colleen G. Lee and welcome to my new series of answering your fashion sewing questions. So I have three questions that I will be answering today. Uh, I will be looking down on some notes that I've made. So the first one is going to be from J E. J. Shelby, and this is to do with concave and convex seams. And the question I'm basically being asked is how to sew them. I do have a video tutorial on how to sew it, so I will put a link below. But the way the question has been phrased is that she's having problems with sewing the curves and the ends are not aligned. The best way to sew any curves is to start at each end. So um, you would go sew from one end and you sew the curve to the centre and then go to the other end and sew it to the centre. And that's how you would get a perfect curve. It can be done all the way round, but you really have to be very good at doing that. Um, the best thing to do, I would, is to pin. So do a lot of pinning, or if you don't want to work with pins, you can pin with fewer pins and then baste, and that will help you to create that curve. So start at each end, so you align the beginning and also the end or, or the beginning, and sew them to the centre. And that is, you will get a perfect curve. Because the thing that you want to make sure is that the curvature is going to be the fullness is going to be at the top so you want that to be nice and round so that's the reason why you would start at both ends here where it's not as curved so you want the curve to be at the top so i hope that answers your question the next question is from antoinette and it's about tape measures and it's reading in between the lines of a tape measure she's asking now i personally prefer to use centimeters because i think it's more accurate and I know I do struggle sometimes on my channel where I am telling you some kind of measurements and I'm always referring to centimetres. It's because I'm comfortable using centimetres, I'm not comfortable using inches. But when I do remember, I try to include inches on my channel because I know a lot of you do ask for that. But um, like I said, you know, it just comes naturally to do the centimetres. So I'm going to go quickly through a tape measure and let you know how to read the little lines in between the tape measure. So I've got a tape measure here. And she's asking about these little lines that are in between each of the inches. Now I'm gonna bring my camera down so that I can make it a little bit more clearer about how to reach in between each of those inches. I prefer to use centimeters because I just find it easier to use. I think it's also a bit more accurate. Um, so this is what the centimetres are like and they're millimetres in between. On the opposite side you've got inches. So here we have inch, these are all inches where these big long lines are. And in between those inch you get this long line here compared to all the rest here. That represents half an inch. So you've got one inch and that will be half an inch. And the next line which is longer than those two there that will represent a quarter of an inch and the smaller ones will represent one eighth of an inch and then in between as my my um, tape measure doesn't have you can have smaller lines in between those and they'll represent one sixteenth of an inch so that is ha that's what the, the markings are on a tape measure with inches Claire is asked, Claire's got a problem with fitting of the neckline. So what's happening is that she's having a lot of gaping at the front and the back. So to correct that, I do have a video tutorial on how to deal with gaping. Um, but I'm just going to give you a bit more depth, but I'll put that video below here. So what happens is that when you're getting too much gaping here, and it, gaping means it's just too much fullness, and um, one way you can do that, and one way that um, Claire has been using is to put darts in or tucks in just so that it gets closer to the neck and it lies flat. But the problem could be starting with the shoulders. If you can bring the seam from the back forward, 
or the front a little bit back so it's not necessarily sitting on the, on, on the straight line of your shoulder as it may do on a pattern. Your shoulders may be coming a little bit forward or your shoulders may be going a little bit back. So you just want to make sure that you start with the shoulders first and pin out any fullness that's in there. And if you find it's tight around your neck, then what will happen is that you will need to redraw a new, a new neckline for the front and also the back and then clip into that in order to make sure that it lies flat. Now what will help you with that stage is the video that I'm talking about now which I'll link below. So sort out the shoulders first and then you can make the adjustments to the, neck, to the, to the neckline and I hope that helps. I just want to say thank you very much for all the kind comments that you've been putting on um, my channel. I really do appreciate them and I'll make sure I try and keep this going. And if you have any fashion zone questions that you want me to answer within this video, which I'll upload on a Monday, um, thank you for the three questions that I have answered and I hope that I, um, it does help. And if you have any other questions or any issues of what I said and you want to come back to, um, to readdress anything then please do put those in the comment box below and like I said if you have any comments that you want to make with this video or you want me to answer your questions which I am answering on a Monday in a video then please put that in the comment box below and I will see you next time. By the way don't forget to like and share the video as well because that will be that will really help my channel quite a lot so yeah thank you.